I think everybody at some point in their school career, whether it's grade school or high school or hell, even college maybe, has always had that one person who sort of sits off in the corner by themselves, waxing their carrot, looking all crazed. <laughs> in my case, that was me. But I have come a long way since then, and I'm pretty happy about that. The big story in the media lately is that coronavirus is going to kill us all. The same way that West Nile virus was going to kill us all in 2002. The same way that SARS was going to kill us in 2004. The same way that bird flu was going to kill us in 2005. The same way that swine flu was going to kill us in 2009. The same way that Ebola was going to kill us in 2014. The same way that Zika virus was going to kill us in 2016. However, to my great disappointment, that never happened. So don't panic. Don't worry. Everything's going to be just fine. Yesterday, I was scrolling through my Facebook timeline and I came across this article. Immediately, I was intrigued and baffled. Look, I'm no expert on female anatomy. In fact, I've never even seen female anatomy, except once in a magazine that I found in my dad's dresser drawer last week. That was really exciting. However, I do know enough to know that if anything, whether it's a dildo or a Game Boy or whatever ends up in your bladder, other than the urine that belongs there, you are plugging away at the wrong hole. This woman also tries to make it sound like the dildo or sex toy or whatever it was just simply vanished, disappeared. Her body just sucked it up and it was gone. It reminds me of that scene in The Dark Knight where the Joker does the magic trick and makes the pencil disappear. Bah, it's gone. This is an excerpt from the article and a quote by her. I moved and out of nowhere, I just felt a really sharp pain, she said. The vibrator was nowhere to be found. Where is it? And he like didn't know, she said. About the moment she and her boyfriend knew something was wrong. Come on, lady. You're not fooling anybody. We know you were doing some really freaky avant-garde stuff with that vibrator. Don't be bashful about it. Own that shit. Nobody is going to criticize you. Except maybe people that go to church but nobody cares what they think anyways. I also came across this article about an Alabama teenager who stabbed his mother and his two twin brothers to death. It's very sad. But what I found really surprising is that he actually went to school after doing that. I mean, I personally would not have gone. I apologize about the noise you're hearing right now. There's some bastard parked next to me and they're doing some weird stuff with their truck. I am in a truck stop after all, so, you know, these things just happen. Can you believe that? I'm Groot. Right, you are Groot. They are a bunch of inconsiderate cork soakers. Coca-Cola has released their own energy drink and reading the ingredients, I don't see cocaine listed anywhere, which is rather disappointing and a big missed opportunity for a good throwback product. This flavor is cherry and I'm going to give it a try. I wonder if it's just like Coca-Cola or cherry Coca-Cola with energy pixie dust in there or what have you. If you combine Coca-Cola with cough syrup, maybe like a 70-30 mix, Coca-Cola 70, cough syrup 30, it's kind of what it tastes like, but really it's just like 
cherry coke just not as cherry all right moving on being a truck driver i'm pretty much locked into only having public restrooms at my disposal and one thing i've noticed is that when somebody's inside of a bathroom stall i can only speak from the perspective of male restrooms uh, ladies if you experience the same thing let me know down in the comments but in men's bathroom stalls i notice that when somebody's sitting on the can doing their number two business they tend to be very angry or political or philosophical or they like to let everybody know who their favorite band is and other times they turn it into a social media account and start writing down people's names and phone numbers and other personal information for example like this door that i saw in avondale arizona at a truck stop now i know it's a little bit difficult to see what's on the door but at the top it says bitch then it says thanks obama then uh below that i guess it's supposed to say thanks obama fucking something or another i can't make out that part somebody below that wrote rock uh jfk uh i shinings or shinnings or i don't know um then it says trump only something then right there in black which is easier to make out says trump for life somebody wrote trump for life and then somebody else came along and finished it without parole underneath that which is uh pretty amusing uh to the left of that it says death to something i can't make out however somebody else came along and didn't agree with that message so they scratched it out fascinating then there's this which i found in a bathroom stall in amarillo texas free personal info for angela dawn roth um it had her date of birth it had her phone number uh and her missouri driver's license number and somebody I guess maybe employees of the uh, truck stop scratched it out or washed it out so you can't see it anymore. But hiding beneath that message, somebody scratched into the wall, fuck Trump. This one I found in a truck stop in Carlin, Nevada. It says, Billy the Kid was here. Now, as you see, between was and here, it also says gay, which I'm assuming somebody wrote after the fact or maybe it was the original person um but billy the kid was gay here so that's a historical landmark here's another one that i found in glade spring virginia it just says bj and somebody's phone number i've obviously blocked it because i don't want this person getting messages and being harassed whatever um, another one in the same stall in Glade Spring, Virginia, Candace Owens rocks. Um, so somebody was taking a dump and they wanted to let everybody know that they are a fan of Candace Owens. Here's another one from Avondale, Arizona. Now what it's supposed to say is Satan's church is Catholic. I'm assuming that's what it's supposed to say, but Obviously, they have a lot of spelling errors because it says Satin's Church is Catholic. But somebody else came along, read that, and realized that this son of a bitch can't spell. So they wrote above that, learn how to spell. I wonder if the original writer comes back and says, oh man, I made so many spelling errors, but they were probably hopped up on meth and couldn't quite, you know, get their thoughts together correctly. And so that's what happened. Here is another one that I found in Middlesex Township, Pennsylvania. Hot BJ with a phone number that I've uh, blocked up a little bit. Because again, just like the previous one, I don't want them getting harassed. Uh, but apparently it's going to be Joe that's going to be given the hot BJ. And I don't know if Joe changed his phone number because the old one is scratched out. Or maybe that was something completely unrelated. Uh, I'm assuming it's different because the area code is different. But anyways, yep. Hot Joe is giving uh, BJ's in Middlesex Township, Pennsylvania. And then there's something below that that I didn't see. But I seen the photo now. It says something about gay rights, I think. I'm not sure. So that's just a few examples that I found across the country in bathroom stalls. And I just can't wrap my head around it that somebody's sitting down doing their business and they're angry, they're writing swear words on the walls or 
letting everybody know about their disdain of a certain politician or showing their love for that politician or, you know, famous person like Candace Owens or letting everybody know what their favorite band is. Slayer is probably the band that I see the most written about in bathroom stalls. So if you are a Slayer fan, there's a lot of you out there and apparently you guys are into writing on bathroom stalls. To my knowledge, I have never written anything on a bathroom stall. And if I have, I definitely wasn't sober at the time. So I'm wondering, have any of you guys written anything on a bathroom stall and what was it? And most of all, why? Or as they say in Dixie, why? I'm not being uh, judgmental. I'm not criticizing. I genuinely want to know what is it about sitting in a stall pooping that makes you want to just, you know, because I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to picture it and I just, I don't get it. I just imagine somebody sitting in a bathroom stall and they're all like, Trump, Obama, Slayer. I'm going to write Jenny's number on the wall right here, right now. It's, it's weird. Now, I rather enjoy these things because when I'm sitting doing my number two, I'm not angry or political or want to get, you know, people to know what my favorite band is. I just kind of do my business, but I look around, right? And see what I can read and what interesting information I could find there. Also, earlier today, I was in need of Wi-Fi to get my iPad and my iPhone backed up. And so I had two options, Starbucks and McDonald's. I tested both of their Wi-Fi's. Starbucks had the faster Wi-Fi, so they got my business. However, this put me in a predicament because now I would be sitting in Starbucks, drinking a coffee with my iPhone and my iPad, and naturally, I would look like one of those typical, pretentious, self-important people that visit Starbucks and I didn't want to do that because I'm not one of those people. I was just there mostly for the Wi-Fi. So what I decided to do was every one minute, 30 seconds, I would scratch my genitals and yell, Naffy! And nobody ended up looking at me like I was some pretentious, self-important dickhead. In fact, everybody tried avoiding eye contact as much as possible. Outside of a hotel in Woodland Hills, California, I saw this McLaren P1. Mm, 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 mm. That is a nice car. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have not, there's nothing I can do about that. There are no refunds for the time you have wasted watching this pointless video. So to end this video, yesterday I was driving down Interstate 15 southbound towards the cesspool known as California. And anybody who's driven that route knows that there's a short 20 mile span that goes through Arizona. And that span of interstate is my favorite anywhere in the country. It goes through what's known as the Virgin River Gorge. It is absolutely beautiful, and I managed to catch the whole thing on my dash cam. And so to end this video, I'm going to play that video. It's sped up, so I hope you enjoy, and I will be back with another video very soon.